Well, first, I got to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Take a picture. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Screenshot that puppy. <laughs> That's awesome. That was for you. It's so good to talk to you. It's good to talk to you, too. And I, yeah, so I produced your commercial voiceover demo like a year ago, January. So this has really mm -hmm. been the first time for us, aside from a recent email. Um, this has been okay. our first time to talk. So there's so much to talk about. First of all, let me just say, and what prompted this is you you notified, you let me know that you're the new voice for Dr. Phil's new network, his new platform called Merit Street Media. So first of all, a huge congratulations to you. That is thank no you. small feat. Thank you. Thank you. It's been crazy. But yeah. Uh, wow. Like I, I said I, in, the, in the email, I told you I wouldn't be this far without the work with you last year, working with the demo and, and learning just thanks my, my range helping me find my range and then yeah. using it, using it here and yeah it's got well, so I, I recently Thank saw you. dr phil uh interviewed it was a it was a long interview but 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 the short of it was one day he was uh, he and his wife were watching tv he was complaining to his wife about the news how he couldn't find a news network that just was not overtly biased right and she said well why don't you do, instead of complaining why don't you do something about it and That's out of that conversation was born at this platform this i don't know if it's yeah. here to call it a network it is a network of sorts it's a platform um, yeah i with, think uh he also took the challenge of of the the big conglomerate said we don't need another one or or yeah another one couldn't make it and he was like well let me see what i can do and so he's he's going full force big media conglomerate whatever you want to call it he's going to push everything out there and uh and, and here you are the awesome. voice of all of this so okay first yeah. of all I want to start, I want to hear all about how that came to be and okay. then back up to the beginning of your journey, kind of talk about yes. what led up to the demo and then what's happened since then. But let's start by just, okay, you're the voice of Dr. Phil's right. network, uh, Merit Street Media. How the heck did that yeah. happen? Uh, you're going to love this. So uh, direct marketing, number one, I sent out, I started doing that last year as, as under your advice and sent out a bunch of emails last year. She, she, this person came to me a few weeks ago and said, Hey, you reached out to me last year. Um, I changed companies and I have this promo. I want you to, to narrate. Can you do that? What's your rate? And a marriage street media didn't know what it was. I'm like, yeah, cool. Some new online news, something that's happening in Texas. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I check it out. Did it a few times. I'm like, Oh, uh, we need some adjustments. Got the director on. We got a live session going and then we nailed it. And then I, yeah, a week later, I mean, that was gone. A week later, they come back with another one, a how-to, how to sign up. And here's Merit Street Media. Here's a website. I click on it, just curious, like, yeah. all right, who are these people? I click on it, <laughs> oh and whose face, whose face shows up but <laughs> Dr. Phil's face? And I'm like, oh, boy. Wow. Okay, this is – and I saw an interview, too, him talking about it and yeah. realizing – this is a lot bigger than I expected. And so it blew my mind. I had to run down, tell my wife, I'm like, you're not, you're not going to believe this. And, uh, I probably should have charged a lot. Believe it. I probably should have charged a lot more, but Hey, H had you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I get it. You can, so, you can renegotiate down the road. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it just spiraled from there because they just launched Tuesday. This is, um, Oh, okay. Early April. So April 2nd, they just launched. So they were pushing. We need everything. We need Steve Harvey, 2 p.m., 1 p.m. Central. So I was throwing that at him. And then. Well, so tell us about the kind of things you're recording. Okay. There's an yeah. example Steve Harvey. Okay. So it's, yeah. you know, you're promoting shows. Yep. And then uh, they needed a lot of conversational. The first promo was very conversational. So it was very specific. They wanted yeah. things just really relaxed. And so that took me some time to find what they needed for that one. Uh, but yeah, the Steve Harvey stuff is just like, yeah, animated, upbeat, and, you know, smile on your face, put it out there. Um, what else did I, I tried a, a Sam Elliott-ish Elliott Nancy Grace promo, which mm -hmm. they didn't go with. So I like, I couldn't, I couldn't get down there far enough to the, yeah. <laughs> for what they wanted and right. make it sound natural and not so character-like. So well, that happens, we got what we've got, that to, you know? Yeah. So like I said, within three weeks, it was a whirlwind. Now it's slowed down because they have launched and uh, they've got a lot of other stuff, I'm sure, to take care oh, of. Oh, yeah, I'm we'll sure, care. especially as they start testing the programming and decide what to keep and get new stuff. Yeah. So yeah. is this like, like a monthly thing where they're saying like every month you can expect X amount of work or how does that work? I haven't you? really heard much. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of waiting with anticipation. Yeah, well, they're probably trying to, find to figure out how it out consistent too. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So direct. There's yeah. a little bit to unpack there, right there. Direct marketing. So you said, and I love the fact that you did direct marketing because so many right. people just, they won't do it because they're, they're fearful. Somebody's going to say, why are you calling me? Or why are you emailing me? Yeah. Or, you know, and you and say, I, I'll tell you, I feel the same way. It's hard for me because I feel like I'm bothering people. I feel sure. like I'm getting in their business and, yeah. but here's one, you know, piece of evidence that it does work and it has worked on, on a few other occasions. So, you know, it's, yeah, okay, I started well, sure. working with the Vomp guys, the, uh, the oh, voice of marketing, marketing pro? pro guys. Yeah. So I'm working with them too. And, yeah. Yep. All those guys, they're awesome. They're sending out emails for me as well, as well as me. Those guys. Out what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm a client as well. Help. Yeah. You know, we'll oh, I see your name. I see your name up there. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Todd Bar Barsness is doing a big direct marketing uh, live training event for us later oh. this month of April nice. that we're talking. Okay. So, you know, looking forward to that. Um, yeah, cool. You say you send out a lot. So can you just, people are always saying, so like how many emails does it take to get a job? And there's no way to, I mean, it's going to oh, differ yeah. depending on you, depending on the demo or demos that you have. That's a huge, sure. huge part of it. But I think it's important to know that it can, it can take, you know, like you said, you send out a lot. And you yeah. got work from it, but it takes a lot to to get a little bit. And that's the way you begin to to, to get momentum. Mm -hmm. And then it's, the other I thing mean, is, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, it's just the analogy of growing a garden is, is perfect because uh, you're putting yeah. the seeds out there. Some seeds need more water. Some seeds need more sunlight. And it's our job to figure out that process and what each one needs in certain genres and certain companies or whatever, yeah. or if they reach out to you, like, what do they need? But. Um, I think that's, that's the biggest part of our job is figuring out oh, like what, what are the seeds going to need, you know? And, yeah. but it is a lot of throwing out and guessing and practicing and, and you don't know it trial and error well, you because you don't know watering. you don't. And as you said, and this was really important. You said it was from the time that you reached out or, or maybe you first heard back from her. It took what was it? A, like a, you say a year later? I think, it's, I think it's over a year. Yeah. I didn't look back exactly, but it was definitely in 2023 when I sent it out yeah. and I never heard anything. There yeah. was no, okay. no warm regard or anything like we'll add you to our list. It was nothing. It just random. Hey, you, you messaged me, uh, you know, a while ago and I've changed companies. Would you like to do this? I'm like, yeah. Let me so you never know what those seeds are doing in the meantime and nor should yeah, you really worry exactly. about it. I mean, right. I can think of time. There've been times where it's taken years. And I'll hear back from somebody, hey, back in 2017, you emailed me. Wow, of course, I don't even remember it because right. that's yeah. just hundreds, if not thousands, you know, of emails. But right. that's very interesting. So you did the direct marketing thing. Mm -hmm. And so a year later, after this email sent, you hear back, and now you are the voice of this brand new network slash platform. So again, yeah. congrats. Yeah. That, I well, mean, thank you. Thank it's a, you. a testament to a lot of different things, your talent, your skill, your persistence, your marketing strategy, all those things. So, uh, so now let's, let's back up a little bit. I want to get, sure. I want to talk about your journey as a voiceover talent. I know you're a musician, uh, mm -hmm. you have a background in acting. Tell us about that really kind of before voiceover, what were you doing? Sure. That's a, the biggest part of my history is music. Um, okay. I spent 10 years at Blue Man Group here in Orlando and, uh, before Love the Blue pandemic. Man yeah, it's fun. Oh, I got, you can see, right. Uh, see if I can do it. Oh yeah. Oh, I love it. I'm back. Yeah. I'm backwards. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> That's my little canvas right there. But uh, I yeah, I spent a lot of years there. I've played at Disney. Um, uh, I'm actually going to be playing at Epcot. Here's a little plug playing at Epcot on uh, April 16, 17, 18 on the big American stage with the M eighties. So, Oh, wow. Uh, Fantastic. Still, Congrats. Still playing. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So, Got to supplement that income, but yeah. uh, you know, uh, but yeah, music, Played in original bands, late 90s, early 2000s, toured with bologna sandwiches and a broken down van. And <laughs> Let's, that, Have you seen the Taco Bell commercials that are out now about a band that like three three dollar a day stipend for food and they go to Taco Bell to eat? It's, exactly. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. There's yeah. life, life on the road. The glamorous life of, of a musician. Yeah, it was so good. So good. You're playing music <laughs> now in acting. Was, was that part of it as well? It came in later yeah. around 2010. 2009, okay. 2010, I took some classes, did some commercials, wanted to add, yeah. you know, something I've always wanted to do. Okay. And then from there, um, it morphed from maybe 2019, I think I started on ACX. Okay. Audio it's also in the back of my mind to do audiobooks. Yeah. I, love, I love Jim Dale. I love all the good storytellers. Right. And uh, I thought I could be good at creating characters and, 
you know, doing crazy wacky things or whatever, yeah. you know, like, um, so I started that doing very boring, crappy books for no money. And, uh, but, uh, that's how you start. <laughs> And uh, entry level it's experience, yeah. Yeah. you got to learn, yeah. you got to yeah. learn no. with that, Absolutely. you got to learn how to edit, you got to learn yes. all of these kind of things. Right. So, um, I also have a little bit of background in computer networking, but also some editing in the studio and stuff. So, I okay. did have some experience, right? Uh, it wasn't all from scratch, but yeah, putting it all together and presenting it to a client, um, that took some time to, uh, you know. At what point did 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 you decide? Okay, well, the, you know, ACX and doing audio books and the, you know the lower pay end of things getting started. Great. At what point did you did you say, okay, now I'm going to branch out a little bit and let's look at commercial work or maybe corporate sure. work or how did how did that all mm -hmm. evolve? Uh, that was the pandemic that did that. Okay. When my full time job at Blue Man Group and my benefits went away, mm -hmm. uh, I needed to think quickly, and so I was like, "How can I expand on this?" I knew a few people here that taught classes. I reached out to them, and they were like, "Yeah, sure." And you don't, you don't have to get an agent. You don't have to do a few of these things. A lot of things that I thought, yeah, I would yeah. need. You know, right. being an actor, you need an agent to get the auditions as an actor, really. But voiceover was different, so that world was different. I took his class and uh, got some, you know, some good insight there, got on voices, one, two, three, and all these mm -hmm. to start auditioning. And that's what he said. Just now, now is the, the, the journey now is to get your first gig. So you just audition, boom to boom, throw it all out, mm -hmm. throw those seeds out there, you know, like the yeah. direct marketing, this is learning your craft. So go out there and you just do it until you snag that, that gig. But that's yeah, just taking a class here in Orlando and then growing from there. Um, uh, to where we are now you know how much work were you booking early on or you know to, to what degree what was your experience like there um it wasn't a lot um but it did get, it did get random some... stuff here and there yeah sure. but it's it's you know even today i wouldn't say oh now i'm like booking like crazy you know um but it's it's gotten even the voice of marriage street better. media still has to work to get right to exactly get because yeah. i mean take for example i had a bunch of work last week and this week has yeah. been kind of like mm. right so yeah. you know it it's always going to be doing the ups and downs it's sometimes it's feast or famine but um as you get better obviously you're going to score more and you have clients that will come back to you and it's it's just you gotta it's the perseverance that's hard uh, that you have to have right yeah, I was talking, Every day. talking about that this morning on my YouTube channel on the live stream. It's it's yeah. about developing skill and then having the persistency and the consistency to execute every day. Yeah. And that's where most people fall off the boat. It's like they just don't have the wherewithal because they yeah. think it's all going to be, you know, sexy and glamorous every day. Yeah. And there's building <laughs> a business is building a business. And I don't care what it is. Right. You know? And it's, yeah. it's certainly worth it. It's it's worth it. But it but, you know, there's a grind that has to right. take place. So let's go back to, okay, so January of 23 is when mm -hmm. uh, you and I were our producer demo. We worked together on that. So what, mm -hmm. what except to that, what, at what point do you decide, oh, okay, I need a commercial demo? Sure. I had had one prior, but I think with lack of okay. experience and the director was kind of new as well and getting okay. his feet and, and I think it was mostly on me. I don't, I don't blame that guy at all, but um, I learned a lot from that demo. I'd, I'd created a few of my own DIY demos and I thought okay. I, I've done even Good. better with those. And then, um, I don't know what exactly prompted, but it was just time. It was time for me, um, to, to plunge a little and put a little more money into my, the investing in myself and having someone that I knew, you know, following your channel for a long time, getting the little insights here and there, how to get rid of mouth noises, how to, you know, Bill DeWeese always keeps coming up. So, you know, you're at the top of my list and be like, yeah, I'm like always oh, there, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Voiceover. It's you're searching for some voiceover bills going to pop up, of course. <laughs> so like I, it was time I had watched your daughter's, uh, Fiverr. Yeah. Uh, class that, maybe yeah. just prior to that. And like, so then I was like, okay, it's, it's time to, uh, dive a little deeper, see what, what I really have and get with a good director that could help me pull out all the stops and, and get it because getting it from here to here and recording is, it's a totally different thing because sometimes even today, like I feel like I've got something and I listen back and I'm like, ah, still, but because of that experience, I know I have more or I know how to tweak it one way or the other, right? I can push more or I need to bring it way back or whatever it is, you know, 
And it's always a process. I mean, yeah. throughout your career, you're always learning to find ways to stretch yourself or to dig deeper within yourself to yeah. learn how to better express yourself. As a matter of fact, let's take I want I want to take a quick moment here. Let's I want to, to play your 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 demo. OK, uh, we'll sure. watch that and hear that. And let's just let's check it out right now. OK, this is Lynchburg, Tennessee, for 150 years, the home of Jack Daniels. If you can't get here, just look for one of our postcards. They look like this. Whether you like to champion new ideas or shout out who you are, loud and proud, Lunchables with 100% juice. Into the city or far from it. The Wagoneer or the Grand Wagoneer. Grand Adventures, the choice is yours. Do your own taxes online with H&R Block and tax season feels just as good as those other seasons, like football season. For all the nevers in life, State Farm is there. No, Peloton isn't for everyone, but at $58 a month, it's for anyone who wants it. Hit up recruiters, talk to agencies, colleagues, and friends. Ask your network, your other network, your network's network, all to fill one position. Try new Yoplait Starburst for big little wins. There, There's the demo. Yeah. We off of that great Jack Daniels commercial. Right. So, Which does okay. get me, that gets me a lot of work in Texas, I got to tell you. Yes. Uh, it's got that, even though that's Tennessee, but still, like anybody, right. with anybody. Elliot or, yeah. Once South the, of the Mason Dixon line, you're gonna be oh, you're gonna be yeah. good there. Yeah. Dig so, deep and draw it out, man. Is that had you done anything like that before? Any like that kind of a read before? No. No. And you, I, and you nailed it. And I think what that what no, that I, says is that people I think one of the things that we that we don't realize, and you touched on this, is we don't have the objectivity to hear ourselves the way other people can hear us. Right. And it's yeah. not that we turned you into a cowboy. That's not what we did. What it was just no. a matter of finding something, a, a, a facet of your personality. And bring sure. it to the forefront. So, really, what the demo is, it's a showcase of your personality. Yeah. Highly produced. You know, the goal is so that when somebody listens to it, what I would hope is somebody would say, Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard you before. Like they, they feel like, right. you know, done at such a level, it's like, Oh, yeah, I heard that guy. I reckon, yeah. I recognize that. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And because that is what helps get you, you know, opportunities. So, let's, let's talk about that process. So, was there anything like, well, and by the way, I don't know whether to refer, when I talk about people I work with clients, it's kind of a student slash client because the a lot of people I don't think realize doing a demo is a learning process. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, some of the, I remember, you know, when I started my career, I learned so much through that process. So it's not just creating a product. There's, mm -hmm. so, there's a lot of education that carries forward in your auditioning and, you know, the, the way you do your work. So we'll just call yeah. you student slash voiceover client. Sure. Yeah. Um, for lack of a better term, I suppose. Yeah. So is there anything, you know, coming into that that you maybe were surprised by or, you know, what, how did it, what was it compared to your expectations and what did you learn throughout that process? Well, there is, there's one thing that you say consistently and that is uh, starting off with a new student. Your first thing is typically you'll say 50% lower, 50% slower. Right, right. Which, you know, you could say that a million times, but to really get it in there and know what it means, no. it really took that experience for me to figure out that it just, it's just right in there. It's barely, barely getting, because what, what did you keep saying in the you session? Know, like, like, like when you wake up in the morning, like the first words yeah. out of your mouth when you wake up yeah. in the morning are not, yeah. Hey, but me know, as a performer and being on stage, I'm yeah. used to projecting to the back room, Absolutely. back row. Yeah. Um, so you got to get just the front row or just the person right next to you. And that, that took a lot. That was, that was what I realized that, Oh, it needs to be a lot quieter. And then it's, I still struggle with that at times. Like it could go even more, even more. Yeah. And let, let the microphone do the work. And, and so it does feel like they're right here. Like, it's just, it's just you and me, man. Like we're just chatting. I'm going to help you out. Here's a product you might be able to use. Maybe not. Maybe so. Here you go. It doesn't really matter to me either way, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, really, it's attitude. I got paid over here, so I mean. Care. That's right. That's, that's right. It doesn't matter to me. And it's all it is about attitude. It is about yeah. attitude. Yeah. You know? And um, that 50% lower, 50% slower, you're right. You know, and usually you have to do it again and again and again. But the yeah. thing, you know, and that's just the one aspect of your personality. But here's the, in my experience, that's the hardest thing for clients to find in voiceover talent. Most people can be louder and more sure. excited. What they have a hard time doing is find find people who can bring that aspect of their personality, because yeah. psychologically, mentally, it's that's a that's a hard thing to do. Yeah, but you do it, especially in that Jack Daniels. I think you showcase that so well, which is why we oh, put it up you. front. Yeah. I 
I'm interested in, and of course, what what I tell people is that, you know, I, I'm putting it together the way that I think you're going to get the best response, but the market will tell you what they like and what they don't like by the way they respond. Have you had any surprises or found out any trends in terms of what people are responding to? Is it mostly the Jack Daniels commercial? Yeah, I think that was a good instinct. Yeah, I think a lot of people react to that the most. The Jeep, the Jeep one, people, which is very similar, just with a little right. less. Wagon your commercial. Playing, yeah. But yeah. Um, you know, the mountains or the seashore, you know, it's just like, right. just calm, you know, John Hamish kind of car salesman. Yes. You know, that kind of, but uh, for me on the opposite side, that was also a bit of a surprise is I, there are times when you can push more, uh, you know, like the, um, uh, uh whether you like to champion new ideas or shout out, you know, yeah. and, I, and I get animated. Sometimes that's right. called for. So yeah, absolutely. It's, just, it's knowing what they're asking for is, is now where I'm trying to tweak. Conversational is one thing, but you still have to feel something. You still need them to yes. feel something. So um, that reality. And also sometimes it's just full on take it, take right. it to the max. And then knowing when maybe you should give both to see, maybe see if they like this, see if they like that. And maybe I'm off key, you know, that's a great strategy, part. by the way, so, when you're doing two takes, yeah, and I found the clients typically, clients typically think they think, you know, we have a lot of nuance in the way we think they typically a client doesn't not always, but typically, and then they, they're they thinking more like upbeat or low, or higher energy, lower energy. That's the they tend to think very binary. So when you can give them two kind of extremes like that, that really is a, I think a great advantage when you're reading for a part or auditioning for a part. Yeah. So absolutely. you've got the demo, you put it up on your website, you're starting to market. Talk to me about the process there. Do you find the demo has made, how has that assisted your marketing efforts? Maybe talk about pre that demo, post that demo, any thoughts or reflections on that? Um, well, it all kind of happened at the same time, me pushing forward, with the direct marketing and having the demo. So it's hard to really know how yeah. much, I, how much traction I would. Okay. So you, you had to the demo for, before you really let out all the stops. Got it. Right. Right. But I, mean, I, I do sense. personally, I, I mean, it's, it's way up here compared to where, where I was, you know, just, just mainly having uh, a range showing a range within that one minute. I mean, I had yeah. a pretty decent DIY demo, but it was kind yeah. of like acting, but it all kind of stayed. It was more like this as opposed right. to this. Always, it's almost like a highway. You know, when you're self-directing, we tend to, it doesn't, I don't care if it's me or somebody else. If there's right. not somebody directing you, we tend to stay within these boundaries. It's like, a, you know, kind of bumping off the sides because sure. it doesn't feel right to go out here. But yeah, when you're being directed and it it's gets like uncomfortable. You, said, you know, you have to think, almost think like the client or think outside yourself when you listen right. to it. Take it to the car. You know, I take it out the booth and just listen on my phone so it's not right in my head and just kind of see how it makes me feel. And like, sometimes that's, you got to get outside yourself and feel like you're listening to it as a different person almost. And I just kind of yeah. like, let it be fresh. It's, it's a different set of headphones. It's like just out of the speaker. And sometimes that's a good insight of like, okay, that's way too flat or right. oh, that's way too much. You know, yeah. usually it's too flat. I can, I can do a little more than that, you know? So. And a change of scenery does help you to hear things more objectively. Isn't it weird? Sometimes yeah. I'll just step out of my studio and come back and it's like, Oh, what was I thinking when I, you know, yeah. I couldn't hear it at the time, but. I want to tell you, Dave Grohl, yep. he talks about, uh, he takes every, all of his mixes to the car because he listens to music in the yeah. car. He knows yeah. what his car sounds like. So he'll take all of his big mixes right there and just, and put the band in there and see, what is that? Does that make me do this? And then they're like, okay, that's a pretty good mix. <laughs> so well, David Grohl, the Foo Dave, Fighters will do it. Then it's good enough for me. Right. Exactly. That, make, exactly. that makes sense to me. So talk to me about, and you talked about direct marketing. So tell us a little more about just like your marketing strategy generally, what kind of things are you doing? Well, like I said, I'm, I'm part of the uh, voiceover marketing pro guys. So they're helping me out. They send okay. out, a, you know, a bunch of emails a month. And then and again, dealmarketingpro.com. We'll shout out to those yeah, guys. Yeah. yeah, Todd and all those guys, Joe, uh, John, all them. I mean, I'll there's put a link below so many the of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, those guys are awesome. Um, so that's, I've been relying a lot on that recently, but I sit down, I try to focus uh, a few days a month where I put my list together, whether it's a list that I've already have or I search out some new emails I try to get at least um uh, every quarter what is it like every quarter I have like 100 to 150 emails that I try to add to and if they respond mm -hmm. then I move it over here to like oh I'll, I'll contact them a little more regularly right and yeah, then I'll add more know. to that list so it's different I'm not I'm not contacting them all the time but at least a couple times a year if I've never heard anything 
And then if I do hear something, I put them over there and maybe contact every two months or something. And yeah. Just a hey. Still, it's hard for me. I, I really love it to be organic. So the holidays are great when you can, you know, happy holidays and it helps. But when it's just a regular right. month, what should I say? What should I say that doesn't sound like I'm trying too hard? You know, so I still struggle with that. But, uh, you know, it's putting those seeds out. Yeah, it's I, I'd say you have to. You have to if you want to be successful. Here's a little tip for you. This is just something that I started playing around with myself with AI. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I'll use the, the Bing, the Bing, um, or you can use chat GPT or Bing has their, you know, their, uh, co-pilot, which is AI as well, mm -hmm. but you can, you can, you can ask it to write an, an email to a client based on it's summer or, or whatever. I mean, just give it a uh -huh. general topic and it will come up with something that's usually pretty clever. You may have to edit it a little bit. Sure. Or it can be a, you know, it's, it's one way to use AI to your advantage. So just sure. something to play around with, you might find it interesting or yeah. maybe not, but I, I've just found it to be pretty fascinating. I've been impressed what it can come, come up That's with things that were out of struggle. An interesting, yeah, approach. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. Definitely. So when's your next session for a Dr. Phil? You know? uh, that's a good question. Like I said, they just launched on Tuesday. Today's Thursday. So, uh, I, I think they must be, uh, trying to stay afloat right now just getting stuff out there i'm sure it's oh. very busy yeah yeah, yeah. So, well you have to stay in touch and let us know how things are going with that absolutely we'll do but, again congrats and what a great journey i mean it's been fun to hear you kind of you know, let us know what that path looks like and everybody's path is a little bit different but you know you've got to develop the you've got to develop the skills you've got to have the tools which is you know the demo i think a lot of people underestimate the power of a good demo yeah. Uh, demo won't necessarily get you, you know, people rarely will call you and say, hey, James, I'm hiring you because your demo. It ha it, that will happen. But usually, right. it's, hey, man, I really loved your demo. Uh, can you read the script like the way you did the Jack Daniels commercial or the, the yeah. HR tax commercial or whatever it is? You I'll know. tell you, anybody that plays golf, and I know you, you play you play golf. Is, is, I do. Is another good analogy is these, they, like a good demo is like hitting a great shot that encourages you to keep playing. You, you didn't just mm -hmm. score under par. You didn't right, score, you, right. you, didn't, you know, you're not becoming pro, but you had a great shot. So it, that encourages you. The demo helped encourage that's you. That's a great analogy. This, it this you one, up. Dr. Phil is like having a great round. All right, that gets me there the next day. <laughs> that's a hole in one right then, there, my friend. And then maybe, you know, maybe down the road, I will feel like a pro, who knows? But sometimes I do feel like I'm just, uh, I'm just faking my way through it till I make it. And uh, Oh, you're the only one then. No, no, nobody, I've never felt that. Nobody else I know has ever felt that <laughs> right, way. Right, exactly. So, Isn't that funny where a bunch of people all natural. proposing, but yeah, that's it. But yeah, you're operating obviously at a very high level. So James, again, congratulations. Just very Thank excited you. for you. Thanks awesome. for sharing your journey. I'm sure it's inspiring others, you know, who are watching it. So Thanks, well, Bill. the best I'll be listening for you on Merit Street Media. Awesome. Here you go. Da -da -ba -da -da -da. You need a buy bill. Oh, yeah. Bye, Bill. <laughs>